Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving <coughs> Spirit, and through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing of all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a, on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read. 
read Psalm 118 in your insert responsibly by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad. The second reading is from Corinthians 15. If for this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be, to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our gospel hymn is number 182, verses 1 through 5.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord, Lord, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. After the Sabbath, at the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes as white as snow. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come to the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and risen one. Amen. Good morning and happy Easter to those of you worshiping with us online and those of you here in the sanctuary. We're all together and one in the spirit. I wish you happy Easter. Thank you. We come out of the darkness of the crucifixion, uh, out of the darkness of the crucifixion and into the light of resurrection. And as I sat this week thinking of you all and reading the text, I was reminded of my sons growing up. I have three sons that are grown now. They got their Easter baskets in the mail from the Easter Bunny this week, so all is well. And one of the things I used to do when they were young is I would write them a little lunchbox poem on a napkin, and I would stick it in their lunchbox when they went to school. If they had something particular going on at school or if they had something to celebrate or in need of encouragement, and I thought about you all and my love for you, God's love for us all, and I have a little lunchbox poem to share with you today. A fire in the dark of night, the light of Christ illumines the night, the cross unveiled and shining bright, joyful praises and delight, word and water, bread and wine, Hearts made new by the divine. Hallelujahs lifted high in praise of the one crucified. Fear and death now undone, for Jesus is the risen one. And as it turns out, Jesus was and is the ultimate truth teller. He did just as he said he would do. His prophecies came true about those around him, about him and his own future. And now the job is a simple one. We are called to be witnesses to that truth. Mary Magdalene and Mary were grieving and probably felt depleted when they carried heavy bundles of spices to the tomb. They were afraid when they saw the angel of the Lord. The angel said, do not be afraid, go. And that word there in the Greek means to go, to purpose with journey. Pursue the journey. Go and tell the disciples, behold, he is going ahead of you. And that is just exactly what they did. They did not let their fears bind them or cause them to procrastinate. When the angel said go, they went. And on the way, they themselves heard the voice 
the very much alive voice of their Lord, saying to them, greetings. I would like to have seen their face in that moment, wouldn't you? They saw him alive and bound down, the scripture says, they clung at his feet. We've had a lot of language about feet this week, haven't we? And they worshiped him. And Jesus echoed the message of the angel. Do not be afraid, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and they will see me there. Over and over we see Jesus fulfill prophecies of the Hebrew scripture and the New Testament. He was then and is now who he says he is and he does what he says he will do. And isn't that the question for us at Easter? Easter is a time of incredible celebration. It's our highest holy day. But there's something about it that calls us to look at ourselves. Are we who we say we are? And do we do what we say we will do? Do we live as people of the resurrection? Are we, in fact, Easter people? Easter is our invitation to new life, to new beginnings, to a very fresh and much alive new start. And we come here today into this space in need of that, perhaps in very different ways. But each of us has some need. Jesus has completely and utterly vanquished the hold of death. Death met God in the body of Jesus. And as we say in our burial rites, those who die in Christ live forevermore. This is why we honor and worship Jesus the way we do this day, pulling out all the stops. And I believe that's an organ term, right, Debbie? It is. We are here to honor him. We are here to praise him. We are here to feast sumptuously at this table that he has prepared for us. The Savior's death has set us free. Come to this table and rise up from the ground. Amen. Amen. I invite you this time to turn in your prayer book to page 292 for the renewal of baptismal vows. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him into newness of life. I call upon you therefore now that our Lenten observance has ended to renew the solemn promises of the vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And I ask you, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching, fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and turn to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and good example the good news of God and Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. 
May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep you in eternal life by the grace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Our next will be number 178, Jesus is Lord of all the earth. Risen Lord, hear our prayers. For the church, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan, our bishop, that we may be signs of Christ's light for all who have lived in darkness, of hope for all who have pain and suffering, and of love for all who have been rejected. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For this parish family, that we may be strong in faith, confident in hope, and abounding with love for God and neighbor. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all the human family, especially the people of Ukraine and all those whose lives are torn by war or conflict, that God will keep them safe and bring them to a springtime of hope and peace. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nations and all those in positions of public trust and leadership, 
that God will strengthen them with wisdom and patience. Praise the Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who cannot be with family and loved ones, that as they hear the good news of the resurrection, they may be bound together in love. Praise the Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary, the God-bearer, and all the saints who have borne witness to the risen Christ, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. To you, O risen Lord, we give praise and glory. Blessed are you, O holy God, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to life. Hear the prayers we offer in the hope of eternal glory, and grant that we who have received new life and baptism may live forever in the joy of the resurrection. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and into the all ages to ages. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, the peace of the risen Christ is always with you. Amen and hallelujah. Peace and peace. Back there. Peace, Aaron. Does anyone have any announcements before I make one? Can we sit down? One? We may be seated. <laughs> anyone have any announcements? I would like, yes, go ahead. Uh, I told you guys last week that Dylan was getting ready to do the crucible. He didn't make it to the crucible. He was set back three weeks. And so he's no longer with his company and his friends that he three members with. So I would like prayers for him. Yes, absolutely. Prayers for Dylan, who's in uh, training to be a Marine. Yes. And I would like to just give my thanks uh, to, to Debbie, our, our, our music director, and to our, our Lem, and uh, Susan, and to Aaron, the videographer, and all of those who've helped this week. Countless people have helped to make our services possible this week, and, and we give thanks for them and offer our thanksgiving and praise to God. And I would be, I'd venture to say that everybody here has participated in some way. So thank you, thank you all very, very much. And you can clap for that. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. Beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with salvation. Father, you love the whole world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, and yet without sin. To the poor, you proclaim the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At the supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance for me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descending among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, and awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you these gifts which you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. We give thanks to you. And we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and us and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all we who share this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. And remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve its peace. And grant that we may find inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father. Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen christ our passover is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast of Christ the Prince of Heaven.
body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out into the world you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 175, verses 1, 2, 4, and 7. Blessed are not forever.
of the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.